Is there a product out there today that provides as many medical benefits as cannabis? No. It remains a, an unutilized major resource. The way to riches in the pharmaceutical industry is to have a drug which can be patented. Cannabis is problematic right from the start because it's a multi-molecule drug. In 1930 it wasn't possible to patent plants and that's the reason that pharma never picked up on this because by synthesizing and owning compounds that's where the profit motive comes into the pharmaceutical industry. The patent in the United States lasts for 20 years. Well, you can charge whatever you want at that time and that's where you make the killing. There's no money to be made off natural plants. If you can use a natural medicine that you can grow in your own home, which costs pennies to use, you're going to do that. You need water and dirt. Not only that, you have that plant forever. Prime motivation behind any drug company is to make money, and as much money as possible. They're corporations, and corporations, everybody knows, that it's like that diffusion of responsibility thing. There's so many people working for corporations that they lose their humanity. So those are potential customers for these pharmaceutical companies that are not there if they're using a natural plant. It's unlimited. You grow more, you get more medicine. Pharmaceutical companies don't want you growing your own medicine. The government supported a small drug company by the name of Unimed to take a synthetic THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, and to put it into capsules to be used as a oral medicine. This became Marinol. This THC in Marinol is exactly the same 21 carbon molecule that's in herbal marijuana. But it's not the same as medical marijuana. It's not a crude mixture of things and there's no guarantee that you get the same results. You can make a synthetic delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol in a test tube. It'll have exactly the same number of atoms and the same arrangement. But how in the test tube can you put the electron spins together, the subatomic quirks and quarks, if you like, of that compound in the same way that a biological enzyme system will put it together? It can't happen. In the case of a synthetic compound, if it's, if it's only an ingredient from the cannabis, they can formulate that as a drug and make a lot more money out of it. We're confused that if, you know, you keep hearing that there's no scientific proof to medicinal benefits of marijuana, why are there drugs like Marinol on the market? Why do they even exist? Well, that's part of this double talk about it. If we take and change it a little bit so you believe it isn't marijuana, then it's okay. It's a, it's a great medicine. <laughs> you know, they're trying to make marijuana into medicine because it is medicine. Why did the government actually grow marijuana? I mean, the government has had marijuana programs that, that, that existed since the 70s. It's impossible for me to believe that the government even believes their own propaganda. What I do believe is this, that you can fool some of the people some of the time, and they're doing an excellent job of that. And for all the claims of these drugs being a more viable medicine because there's no high, we check some of the side effects. For Marinol, dizziness, feelings of exaggerated happiness, drowsiness. Last time I checked, those were signs of getting high. If it is indeed side effects of marijuana that are preventing the pharmaceutical world from accepting marijuana as a viable medicine, then they better start paying more attention to the products they've been marketing for years. Every year, prescription medicines kill over 100,000 people. The pharmaceutical industry has been excellent at convincing the public that they need their potions. If you watch any kind of commercial for drugs, they're always using the third person. For example, where does a headache come from? It comes from out there somewhere. Don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle. How many people in this country alone are addicted to antidepressants? How many people who are on antidepressants really have imbalances and how many of them just got off of a bad relationship and they're depressed? It seems to be acceptable to give people something as long as you're wearing a white smock um, or you've given them a legal prescription. It doesn't matter how deadly the particular drug might be in terms of side effects. What we call modest medicine is actually the alternative medicine because it's, it's highly experimental, it's often dangerous, often toxic, and it kills a lot of people. To me, it's crazy. There's, there's a lot of stuff out there that will affect you in different ways. Look at aspirin, heroin, both in, in, invented by Bayer. 
I thought heroin came from opium seeds. And Just was... natural effect of opium, you yeah. keep making it more and more concentrated. No, you have to add certain chemicals to it and tweak it a certain way. It doesn't just come from opium itself. What was heroin made for? Uh, as a cure for morphine addiction and coughs. Heroin, the sedative for coughs. Pseudoephedrine, that's the main ingredient in methamphetamine, is to cure the cough, the cold. If you get a cold, oh, I think I'll do some meth. When you look at it from a large perspective, like, you know, what's weed? Even Francis Young, the DEA's own judge, who took medical testimony for over two weeks, made this statement. Marijuana, in its natural form, is one of the safest, therapeutically active substances known to man. Yet, despite this, and the ever-mounting number of real-world patient success stories, cannabis remains listed as a Schedule I narcotic. Under that category, marijuana is classified as having no known medical value.